Let's get started. Yom Teruah. Everybody say Yom Teruah. That just sounds cool, doesn't it? Yom Teruah. Yo means day. Teruah is shofars. The day of shofars. Now, when you read in your Bible trumpets, we're not talking about big band trumpets, okay? Even when you read silver trumpets, you ever see religious artwork and they've got like modern day silver trumpets the angels are playing? Sorry, aunt, wrong picture, okay? They were ram's horn shofars wrapped in silver. Those were the silver trumpets. Everybody understand? So the first thing is get the picture right. Who's got a shofar this morning? You do. I know it's not a ram's horn, but I want you to pull it out and show them and give us a blast. Sure. Give us a blast, brother. Stand up. We're going to do this. We're going to do it right. Face east. Awesome. Thank you. That's a shofar. That's a horn. That's what the Bible calls a trumpet. Everybody understand it? I want to start this morning, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to go kind of fast here this morning because I want to cover some ground. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, These are the appointed feasts of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations. They are my appointed feast. Now how many of you know that when you read some words, we don't always understand what those words are? Like if I asked you guys, what's a holy convocation, we'd all look at me with a glazed look in our eyes and say, I don't know, but it's in the Bible. So let me give you some meanings here. The holy convocation, Hebrew, the Hebrew word is mikro. It literally is something called out. It's a public meeting, a dress rehearsal. Everybody say dress rehearsal. rehearsal. How many of you were ever in a play in school growing up? Did you ever have, before the big day of the play, where your parents come and everybody else, did you ever have a dress rehearsal? The dress rehearsal was there to make sure that you got everything right before the big day, right? How many of you have ever been married here before with a wedding? Four of y'all, okay. <clears throat> oh, not here. No. How many of you ever been married with a wedding ceremony? Very good. Thank you. So, in your wedding, how many of you had a dress rehearsal? And you go through the dress rehearsal and you make sure that you iron out any issues you make sure everybody knows where they're standing, what they're doing, and then the real day comes and you're ready and you're prepared. Everybody say prepared. So these feast days, and there's only seven of them. There's not like there's 212 feast days. There's seven feast days, seven holy days to the Lord. And these feast days are dress rehearsals. That means it's a dress rehearsal for something that's coming. And I can tell you right now, his name is Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's what these feast days. So the Lord says these are holy convocations, holy mikros, holy dress rehearsals. They are my appointed feast. And that word appointed feast is moad, okay, in Hebrew. It's an appointment, a fixed time or season, a signal, an appointed sign. How many of you women here ever go to a hair salon? Okay. How many of you have to make an appointment to go to that hair salon? How many of you, if you made that appointment to go to the hair salon and you missed that appointment without calling, she'd be a little upset. Why? Because you made the appointment, she expects you to be there. Now, if you look over in the verse here, the Lord says, these are the appointed feast of who? Everybody say of the Lord. Well, those are Jewish feasts. It says that nowhere in the Bible. It says these are the Lord's feast. They're not Jewish feast. They're the Lord's feast. Now, I'm not against other holidays, but really, biblically, there's only seven holy holidays that God gives. And these are his feast days. These are his dress rehearsals. These are his 
holy appointments. Who's this appointment with? Everybody say me. me. With you. Amen. Look at your neighbor, say you. Amen. His appointment is with you. Right? So these feast days is an appointed time that God has set apart in the calendar every year for you and him to meet. And you say, well, we meet every day. Yes, you do. But to meet in a holy assembly with other people. How many of you know we have a lot of Lone Rangers out there today? Prayer meeting, they're going to go pray by themselves. Right? These are holy assemblies, meaning doing it together. There is power when God's people come together, guys. When we come together to pray, to celebrate, to worship, there is power. Back when I was younger, church, man, being with brothers and sisters, we did Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. There wasn't any of that. We had bigger crowds on Wednesdays than we did on Sunday mornings. And if I did part one on Sunday morning, boy, everybody was back for Sunday night. But here in the year 2020, I'm going to tell you, believers have gotten super lazy. And we think we're going to walk the walk without anybody else needed. And I'm telling you, that is not the plan of God. That is not the will of God. Amen? All right. <clears throat> Don't shout me down because I'm preaching truth. Let's go on. So these are appointments. In Genesis 1.14, it says, Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. How many of you know we have the sun and the moon, and we use them all the time for the calendar and for everything else, right? But what you may not know is that word sign literally means a flag, a beacon, a monument. And that word seasons is that same Hebrew word we just read in Leviticus, which is Moad. It's a divine appointment. So you mean God put the sun and the moon and the stars in the sky already in mind so it could be used to keep track of his divine appointments to meet with the assembly of the called out ones. Wow, that's amazing. That's all the way in Genesis. Nothing's even happening except the creation of the universe. <laughs> and God's already got a plan amen. to meet with his people. Someone say amen. amen. Now... <clears throat> Oh, I get to use this for the first time. I'm so excited. Thank you, Joshy. I love this. All right. So these are the feasts. The fulfillment of the feasts of the Lord, the Lord's feasts. There's seven of them. Passover. Can everybody say? Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, day of atonement, tabernacles. These three right here will, were fulfilled by Jesus and concerned Messiah. These two, one's been fulfilled, one's yet to be fulfilled. These concern the church, the called out ones, the ecclesia of the Lord. And these two are the return of Jesus and concern primarily the nation of Israel. The first feast was Passover. Everybody say Passover. How many of you know when Heavenly Father does something and doesn't do it by coincidence or by accident? At the exact day of Passover, at the exact time at 3 p.m., at the exact moment that the high priest took to cut the neck of that Passover lamb was the exact moment that Jesus on the cross gave up the ghost and says, It is finished. The same day, the same moment, Jesus fulfilled Passover. His blood is our Passover lamb. He is our Passover lamb. His blood is our forever perpetual sacrifice. Amen? Amen. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, which actually starts at Passover, is that sinless life that we watch Jesus live, right? For three years, for three days, the Feast of Unleavened Bread before first fruits, but this actually lasted for a week. First fruits, what they did is the high priest went out on that morning into the barley harvest and he grabbed a sheaf of barley. It was ripe and ready to be harvested. And he would do a wave offering before the Lord. It was just at sunrise. And it was the same moment, the same day, 
that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose up from the dead, the first fruits of the resurrection. The same moment he's doing that wave offering, the Holy Spirit is causing that stone to roll away, entering into the body that was lifeless of Jesus and bringing him back to life. He fulfilled first fruits at that moment, at that second, at that time. Then we have the fourth feast, which is Pentecost. Shavuot in Hebrew. And the feast of Pentecost is pretty amazing because just like the feast of first fruits is the first fruits of the barley, the feast of uh, 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 Pentecost is the first fruits of the wheat. So they'd go out into the wheat field, and early in the morning, they would take the sheaves of wheat do a wave offering before the Lord. Then they would take that wheat grain. And remember from the Feast of First Fruits, it was the barley? They would take the barley that day on First Fruits and they would mix it with some water and allow it to grow natural leaven. And it would become almost the way you make natural sourdough. Ladies, any of you ever cook natural sourdough and let yeast let it grow naturally? Okay. And then they take that barley and the wheat from Pentecost, on day of Pentecost, the wheat from that morning, and they took that barley that was the sourdough starter, and they inserted it into the dough of the wheat, and the two loaves became what? Everybody say one. one. That same moment. Ooh, I like that. Sorry, I'll point this way. That same moment that they were inserting the barley into the wheat, what they did, 120 in the upper room, and precious Holy Spirit descended, and the barley, Jesus' resurrection, entered into the wheat, you and I, and for the first time, mankind was baptized with the Holy Spirit. First time ever. The same moment, the same day. How many of you think all this is just some weird coincidence? Absolutely not. God set the, listen, he set the stars in their place in the universe. Everything is mathematically perfect. God doesn't make mistakes. Everything is perfectly aligned as he wanted it. Amen. The next feast, Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. Now, this is where it gets a little weird, but Rosh Hashanah is actually a different holiday than the Feast of Trumpets, but they're celebrated on the same day. Rosh Hashanah is the civil Jewish New Year. For how long? Well, I think, I think it just turned 5,718, I think is the year right now. So for like thousands of years, the Jews have been keeping track of the New Year, okay, on that day. The Feast of Trumpets is also on that day. And we're going to look at the scripture because the Lord said this is the day to celebrate it. Tells them what day, the first day of Tishri. The Day of Atonement and Tabernacles will do another day. So, let's keep going. So we said Pentecost was the birth of the church, and what did we say the next feast day was to be fulfilled that hasn't been fulfilled yet? Feast of Trumpets. Everybody say Feast of Trumpets. Feast of Trumpets. Feast of Trumpets. Sundown to sundown is a Hebrew day, by the way. Why? You can read in Genesis, and the evening and the morning was the first day. In the evening and the morning was the second day. In the evening and the morning was the third day. It's always evening to the sundown the following day for a day. One of the unique things, now you know our day is from midnight, right? So it's probably actually a four-hour difference, okay, give or take. One of the unique things about Yom Teruah, or the Feast of Trumpets, is that the Torah, the Torah is the first five books of your Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the Torah. So the Torah does not say what purpose this holy day is. It's a mystery. Imagine this. Imagine telling your son or your daughter, I want you to celebrate a special holiday, and this is the day I want you to do it. And they say, all right, Mom, what are we celebrating? Well, I can't tell you. It's a mystery but I want you to celebrate it anyway. That's Feast of Trumpets. It's a mystery. But how many of you know the precious Holy Spirit lets us in on some of that mystery? Amen? Hallelujah. So listen, one of the unique things about this is that it's a mystery 
They were not told in the Torah why they were celebrating it, only how to celebrate it. The Torah gives at least one reason for all the other holy days and two reasons for some. No man knows the day nor the hour because the Feast of Trumpets starts on a new moon. And it's in Mark 13, 32, where it says, no man knows the day or the hour that the Lord's coming back for his people. So what's that mean? It starts on a new moon. I want to show you a picture right there. On the Hebrew calendar, a new month always begins on the evening that a sliver of the new moon appears. And that's actually a picture of the very first sl uh, sliver of new moon. I think it's actually, they say it like 3% of what a full moon would be is that for have you ever seen that first little sliver there's like no moon then this would be the new moon there's that sliver that's how the jews mark the first of every month of every month well if they were supposed to have this appointment with the lord on the first day of tishri and you really didn't know when the first day of tishri was until you what could go outside and make sure that you saw that first sliver of moon. Otherwise, you're on the wrong day. You missed the appointment. Historically, new moon spotters in Israel watched for this thin crescent to establish the beginning of each month. And once they saw it, they reported their sightings to the calendar court authorities of the Sanhedrin. They didn't have Google back then. Do you all understand? They couldn't Google... When is the new moon start for the year 2025 in the month? They didn't have all that. So they had to actually, I know if the young people were here, this would astonish them. They had to actually go outside of the house <laughs> to find something out, right? They had to actually look in the sky and look for that sliver of moon. Well, what would happen is sometimes it might be cloudy and they'd have to wait to see the clouds move enough to be able to say, ah, it's a new moon. Go report it to the Sanhedrin. They'd go back to the calendar court. They'd repeat it, report it. Yes, feast of trumpets, we're on. Everybody understand? Pretty cool. Why? Because that was the appointment. That's when God said. It wasn't like, oh, you know, God said today, but we're just going to do it next week. That's the Gentile way of doing things. Amen? I'm being mean now. Forgive me. Yom Teruah is known as the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Trumpets. I love this. Now, what's amazing is these are all the names over the thousands of years that the Jews have come up with for the Feast of Trumpets. And what's amazing is they're all prophetic about the fulfillment from Jesus for the Feast of Trumpets. It's called the Day of the Awakening Blast. Well, what in the world do you think is going to awaken? Besides you when I get done preaching. What is the Awakening Blast? How many of you know that the dead in Christ shall what? They're going to rise first. How many of you have loved ones or believers or friends, I do, who have passed on to be with the Lord? Well, they get their bodies first. Their spirits are reunited with a glorified body, and the Bible says the dead in Messiah rise first. When's that? On the day of the awakening blast. What? We're going to hear shofar sounds from heaven, and cemeteries are going to start opening up. I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know if it's just... I mean, I don't know. I wrote a book about it. I pictured it. I made it fun. I made it where, you know, the graves opened up and all the cemeteries that where believers were buried opened up. And I don't know how it's going to look. I just know the dead are rising up. And they're rising up beautiful. They're not going to look like Night of the Living Dead. They're going to look like glorified bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. Those with the mark of the beast will look like that, but not God's people. The day of the awakening blast. So when do I think that trumpet's going to sound and the dead in Christ is going to rise first? I think it's going to be one year on the Feast of Trumpets. 
And you may not know this unless you come on Friday night, but there is a hundred trumpet blast on the Feast of Trumpets. You don't believe that? Ask these guys here who blew them that Friday night. And they were, poor Toby was turned purple and green, and he was running out of oxygen. I love you, Tobes. But they did good. But that last blast, the Kiel Gadol, it is that long blast of the shofar after all 99 other blasts are done. And it's that last trump of God. That's going to be the awakening blast where the dead and Messiah rise up. You see, what I'm telling you, all believers shall already know this. This is, in the, this is Bible stuff. Are you following me? It's known as Yom Hadin, meaning the day of judgment with mercy extended. The Bible calls it the day of the mercy seat of Christ, the judgment of Christ, where we receive our rewards from the Lord. Amen? It's known as the opening of the books. What? The Lord has books? Yeah, and we're going to talk about one in a minute. The opening of the gates. It's called Yom Hakasah, the hidden day, the day that no one knows. What Paul say? Behold, I show you a mystery. Everybody say a mystery. Wow. This is that mystery and wow. You get it now? The hidden day. It's the day of the great shout. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel. Right? With a shout. Everybody say a shout. Listen, guys, when the Lord comes back, there's going to be a shout that's going to shatter the heavens, the likes of which this planet has never heard. Now, why is he shouting? He's excited to have his people be with him. Amen? It's known as Messiah's coronation. What's a coronation? A coronation is where you take a king. Let's say, Sammy, we're going to be king and I was going to take a crown and place it on his head. That event where I place the crown on his head is called the coronation. This day is known as Messiah's coronation. How many of you know Messiah is getting a crown? But you know his crown's not what you think it is. It's known as Rosh Hashanah. I'm going to skip this to save time. It's a little video. Leviticus 23, 24. The Lord spoke to Moses, Moshe, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest. What day of the month? First day. Remember that sliver of the moon? That was the appointment. It's a day of solemn rest, a memorial, remembrance, proclaimed with a blast of shofars and a holy appointment. How many of you know that we do do some memorials in the church? How many of you know every time we take communion, it's a memorial, a remembrance of the Lord's death until he returns, right? These are memorials, a mystery, and I'm telling you here today, it's a mystery that's going to be fulfilled by the awakening of the dead and the changing of the church to be with Jesus. Now, we can argue when, but people cannot argue if. Because the Bible is very plain about that. Amen? Amen. Mikra, we said, was convocations, that holy appointment. I love this. This is Malachi 3. Remember I said it's known as the day the books are opened? What books are we talking about? Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. And the Lord listened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. How many of you like to fellowship and talk about Jesus outside of just when you're at church? Amen? I know Pamela and Nancy and Brenda, they get together and they love talking about the Lord and things of God. And Jason was telling me when he's on the job, he loves talking to other workers about the Lord. Every time you're talking with other believers about Jesus, the Lord's taking note, and that goes in his book of remembrance. Wow, that's astonishing, amen? That the Lord actually keeps a book of remembrance. Aren't you glad your sins aren't in it? Someone say amen. 
Verse 17, and they shall be mine. Who? His people, says the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my what? Now what did we say this day was known as? The day of the Messiah's what? Coronation. The day when the crown jewels are set on Messiah's head. But here, those jewels are not diamonds and gold. Listen, in the kingdom of God, gold is paving material. Am I right? Those jewels are God's people. In the day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. The jewels are the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. You are the jewels in Messiah's crown and on that day of that heavenly trumpet blast, one day on the Feast of Trumpets, the Lord's going to bring you and I home. If you're dead, you're awakened. If you're alive, you're changed. And you will be with the Lord. And you will be part of that crown at Messiah's coronation. Your life is a jewel that makes up his crown. That is a beautiful picture. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Let's talk about the Lord's going to return after that. Between him that serves God and that him who serves not. And that day's coming too. Someone say amen. amen. It's a book of remembrance that was written before him. Remember that name, the opening of the books we said. In that day when I make up my jewels, that's Messiah's coronation. Zechariah 9.16 confirms this. The Lord their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people. Wow. Isn't he the good shepherd? And we are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. For they shall be like the, what? Jewels of a crown, lifted like a banner over his land. Hallelujah. Just look to your neighbor and say, you're a jewel in God's crown. Now, I don't know if you're a polished ruby or if you're just like charcoal that just turned into a really rough diamond. <laughs> we'll leave that for the Lord to decide. We were all that at one time, amen? So Holy Spirit's still polishing and working on us all, amen? Numbers 29, one. are you all getting anything out of this? Can I keep going for a couple more minutes? All right, Numbers 29, one. on the first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You won't do any ordinary work. It's a day, yom, for you to blow the shofars, teruah. Now that word teruah is a beautiful word, guys. It not just means shofars, but it's an acclamation of joy. It's a battle cry, especially clamor of trumpets. It's a blowing jubilee, loud noise, rejoicing. How many of you ever went to a high school blowout before the homecoming game? What do they call it now? Blackout? Isn't that what they call it? Blackout? Did I say that right? Huh? Blackout, whatever. But it's a day of screaming and getting excited before the big game. So here, every feast of trumpets, they're screaming and getting excited for thousands of years, the Jewish people. Why are you excited? I don't know. It's a mystery. And then we have God's people now in the year 2020. We should be excited. Why? Because we know that one day Jesus is going to fulfill the Feast of Trumpets. And he's going to fulfill it by awakening the dead and bringing his church home. Man, that's something to get excited about. Amen? Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, a shout, a cry of excitement, a teruah, with a voice of an archangel. Well, what do you think the voice, what do you think the Lord's going to say? What do you think that shout's going to be? Do you know the Bible tells us, I believe, what that shout is? In Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And I, John, heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Come up here! And instantly I was in the heavens. So what's that shout? 
I believe it's going to be, come up here. Woo, glory. Don't have to ask me twice. Some of y'all like to be late. Can be late. You want, Lord, five more minutes, please. Oh, the sound of this trumpet, it says, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the shofar of God, and the dead in Messiah will, what? Rise first. That's the awakening blast. Everybody say awakening blast. How many of you are heart sleepers? How many of you are not morning people? I know Kayla's not. She works for me. Like, Kayla, what's wrong? It's morning. Can you imagine, Kayla, Miss Kayla, if you're not even awake yet, you're still laying in bed? I'm not giving you any ideas, Toby. But Toby took a shofar and put it close to her ear and started blowing it. Now, she might awaken in wrath, <laughs> but she would awaken. Listen, this blast of the shofar is going to be so incredible that final... 100th shofar sound is going to be so incredible that it wakes the dead. And the spirit of the living God on that last blast brings those dead bodies supernaturally back to life. Then we who are alive, who are left, I hope that you and I will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so we will always be with the Lord. Hallelujah! Teruah! I love that. So we will always be with the Lord. Amen? And I think I'm done. And that was just one feast day, feast of trumpets. Who said I think that was the best part? That was beautiful. No, that is the, listen, let's all stand to our feet. That was the best part. Is the awakening, I know you mean me ending. The awakening blast was the best part. Amen? Listen, guys, this is why I want you to hear. We never do anything out of religious obligation. We always do what we do because we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Salvation is only through the shed blood of Jesus. Amen? I'm just sharing with you these appointments are perpetual. They're forever. That means if that's on God's mind, on Heavenly Father's mind, it should be on my mind too. Not because I'm Jewish, but because I'm a believer in Jesus. Because in God's eyes, there is no more Jew or Gentile, barbarian or Scythian, but there is rather a new creation in Messiah Jesus. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's pray. Jill and Steve, if you would come forward, Miss Karen and Brother Jim. Father, we praise you and we bless you. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we do pray traveling mercies over Pastor Brian, Miss Karen, as they travel home this afternoon, Lord. Be with them on their flight, on their travels, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this message today, Father. Lord, you've set aside divine Holy Spirit appointments for your people. And Lord, the devil's robbed that from the church, literally stolen it from your people for thousands of years. But in these end times, in these last days, Lord, you are restoring this around the world, and it is miraculous to see, Father. And Lord, you're preparing your people because one day we'll be in your kingdom for a thousand years celebrating these very things, no longer as rehearsals, but having their fulfillment in Jesus, Messiah. 